Yeah. So which mode? Presenter mode or? Yes, it's in the present mode, yeah. Yeah, here the same. Uh, we have uh, two options. Yeah, we just wanted to understand now how these uh, input costs from the microeconomic uh, theory, uh, what we would expect yeah, if we run the model with just saying uh, you have to pay more for fertilizer. Um, and so the second scenario will be, of course, if you're paying more for fertilizer, we would assume that we are reducing somehow, of course, uh, our uh, inputs, our production. Um, so what will happen then when we also have accounted for a price feedback? Um, so for this, maybe from this economic the basic economic classes, yeah. You remember that that when we have a production function here, yeah. So we have a certain input. It could be now also NPK. Um, so here it's only for N for nitrogen. So if we have a, a certain point here in our supply module, which produce a certain uh, quantity, which is here, yeah. We have also from the economic theory, we know that if we are using this uh, nice profit function here and make the derivative to the input use, yeah, then we come up to this marginal value of product. What does it mean? Yeah, This marginal value of product is uh, nothing else. Yeah, It's this term here. It says, so what you are, when you increase one kilogram of this input unit, what you are producing more, what can be, so to say, uh, sold to the market a bit more yeah for the next unit uh, times the price of this product in this case here wheat yeah so this is the marginal production value yeah we, we, we say that and this uh, is interesting if we are using this first derivative so maximizing profits we know that this should be equal to the input price yeah. So this is this is here. So this is the input price. Yeah. So this is at the initial point in our reference. Uh, we have a certain uh, price for n. So this means using this, uh, the model has uh, determined more or less the optimal input for the price here received for this quantity. So what now we are doing is we are shocking the system. Yeah. So we increase the price uh, for for the input. Yeah. So indicated by this N for nitrogen. So, and we know this, yeah. So if this price increases, also this somehow increases, yeah. And it shows us the new input uh, allocation. So we are intuitively quite easy. We assume if we increase the price of certain inputs, yeah, then we are also reducing the use of them. And this uh, has then an effect on our production function here. So these are the, the same dimensions. So input use, yeah, and our on, depends on the form of the production function. We have also a classical reduction of quantity. Yeah, and this is for all the different products. And as we are shocking more or less for all the products who are using this fertilizer, um, uh, this will be done more or less for all the uh, different uh, crops in Europe. And this means that we have a production uh, decline overall. And this has, of course, uh, the implication for the markets as demand still uh, is constant or not changed. Um, and it means that probably prices have to increase, yeah? that farmers produce again a bit more. So, but this is the story without a market model. So it means we should uh, clearly see that the production uh, function indicates a de declining quantities of, of uh, products in Capri. So what happens now if the price increase? And that's why here is a bit uh, indicated yeah, as uh, in red here. So this line indicates this marginal value product. Uh, it means yeah, this additional production of, so if I take one kilogram of N, what can I produce more in theory and what can I, what kind of price I attach to that to, to sell it on the market. Now the price increases. 
as we said, this would be our expectation. And this moves uh, this marginal, uh, marginal value production function uh, to the right. Yeah. So, so given that this the, the price is still the same here, yeah, you will see uh, that we have this a counterfactual effect here. Yeah. So that the input use uh, is not declined as if we had no price effect. And this is then translated into our production function, the total production. So, uh, and if you look at our reference in this case, with the market model, we would assume that we have less uh, decline in production. Uh, this is the microeconomic theory. And why is this the case then? So if you look at bit here, you know, uh, our supply function is the marginal uh, cost curve. Yeah. And if, of course, the marginal cost curve, why these prices are increasing, so what we discussed. Um, so we have here demand and we have supply. And of course, if we are increasing uh, prices for inputs, then we have higher marginal costs. And this means also that we have an upward uh, shift of our supply function. And this means that we have this a, a certain price increase observed, yeah, which then triggers exactly uh, this line of microeconomic uh, relationships. So this is the microeconomic theory behind. And uh, as we have in the session before, we would like to prove that with our model. Yeah. So um, this is the implementation. We increase 80% the price of fertilizer for all the three different fertilizer uh, types we have represented in our model. Um, very similar, we store that factor here on, on this data cube, then we translate that in our price um, uh, position. And here again, the third time, I think now um, our objective function, uh, we know that uh, here, uh, is our overall objective. The goal is to maximize that here for the farmers is some ups, uh, more or less the contribution of this linear objective, which is stated here. And some others we had discussed already, PMP terms and uh, transaction cost for land uh, changes. And uh, what you see here is that we are changing also these prices here. And it's not only that on, on this vector prices for, for selling products, but also for prices for uh, buying products are included and mineral fertilizer is bought is buy it as a product which we are buying, so to say, and which is also here accounted. Yeah. Uh, but of course it enters with a minus in the objective function. So that's there are costs. Yeah? And then this kind of mechanism by uh, maximizing the objective function will lead to uh, trickle down effects in the model. And the microeconomic theory showed us that we have then probably a decline in quantity and an increase in prices if we switch on the market module. Okay, here, just to let you know what kind of um, uh, short uh, acronyms we are using for the uh, different fertilizers, uh, they are in pure in, in content, so we are not differentiating in fertilizers specific which the farmers applied, but we are co calculating a kind of uh, nitrogen, uh, which is uh, included in all the different fertilizers uh, who has been applied is in ton. And, um, um, I think that's all for here. Um, our expectations, we formulated that already. Supply should decline, uh, price should increase, the fertilizers should, uh, use should also decline and income. Uh, let's see, uh, we have to analyze what is kind of effect this has. Okay, here the same, we have uh, 45 minutes left. Um, to complete this um, quiz again, which is provided in the next slide. And I would like that maybe uh, the first group also starts again looking at uh, the fertilizer use and maybe the environmental impact. The second group maybe also look at uh, potential trade effects. That would be nice. And uh, the third group uh, looks at uh, income effects yeah, if uh, they are not directly us in the, in the quiz. So, and this time, please, yeah, so dedicate indicate one member of your group who is presenting at the end so that he are really either writing down or I do not know so that that's that we can save some time uh, during uh, presenting the group work. So where can you find um, the scenario? It's either on the wiki, you can copy it or it's here in the presentation, you also can copy it. Um, 
please store the scenarios from the uh, wiki page also. Um, the scenario files, put them in your uh, output uh, results cup mod folder, load them in, uh, indicate in this time with and without market model. Uh, and I had the feeling that it was not clear. Um, so which file used with and without the market model. In this case, I named them with market model and without market model. And as the simulation is more or less the same, I would just indicate that also uh, that you ca uh, can compare in the explorer then uh, which numbers belong to which uh, scenario. Okay, that's all. Um, one hint here also, uh, supply details, you know that now. Uh, total price changes and prices is also seen. Also the price changes um, for fertilizer should be uh, checked. Yeah, So this is also in prices and table prices. And uh, if you want to look how the fertilizer balance changed, so how the, the, the mineral fertilizer uh, changed uh, due to this price change. And also the menu, how many menu is taken up, then you can look at uh, table environment and nutrient balances and cross nutrient budgets. So this is the this clues for for um, the exercise, and it's quite easy uh, because we are have here the results for uh, without the market model, yeah, and with the market model in brackets, yeah, so that you have to indicate and then please inspect if your expectations for microeconomic theory fits to what we have observed in Capri. So thanks a lot. I leave that here. I think we made some progress. Um, we will start with the last group. So group three. Uh, yeah, give me a second. Felix, can you? Yeah. Um, share your findings with the group. Okay, so um, these are our findings. Um, we checked, um, first of all, the um, supply for soft wheat. Um, without the market model, the supply um, changed by 26% with the market model. Uh, just by 9.15%. Uh, and that is explained because um, there's no price changes without the market model. There's no price change with the market model. There is price change. So if there's a price change and um, it gets more expensive, um, the supply doesn't drop as much. Mm -hmm. Good. And, uh, same for the hectare. Hectare uh, change is uh, larger without the market model than with the market model. And then the uh, change in mineral fertilizer um, changes by 20% um, uh, without the market model and 10% um, with the market model. And as um, a result of this, the manual production increases because then you substitute mineral fertilizer uh, through manure. So we get uh, more manure production. Um, while mineral fertilizer drops. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, we have seen the figures, uh, at least they are in line what I have expected and also um, um, identified in, in, in my simulations. Um, you had also a look at the income, I think. Okay, might, might you share your... Uh, yeah, then uh, Anna. Yeah, so what is telling us this nice chart yeah, or this uh, map? Yeah, so we see here um, how the income changes um, in different uh, regions. Um, and like, I can't see the numbers. So the darkest is the smallest or the biggest income change? I think this is this is uh, there. There are some positive numbers, but in general, the the the, the lighter it is, uh, the 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 largest is, is uh, the, the the largest uh, decline in income. So if you if we look at regions in the Netherlands and Belgium, it seems that it's not so 
complicated, yeah, because they have a lot of manure available, yeah, so they can somehow compensate here. Uh, but if you look at these high productive areas, um, so also with respect to France, yeah, you have less tremendous effects in Spain. Yeah, yeah. I do not know exactly. We we should we should look what kind of different crops. I mean, is Andalusia? You have a lot of other uh, like olives, I think. And uh, who is an expert there? Probably from Seville, orange and uh, uh, pig pro producing uh, activities, something like that. So, and of course, this needs now to be inspected um, in a bit, bit more in detail. So we do not have that effects in Italy also this needs to be um, checked yeah uh, but in general I think we see that uh, we have an income loss in all uh, regions yeah it would be nice to to find out if these uh, numbers you here depict uh, is also minus yeah so uh, so it's smaller 60 18 24 40. So the range is in between 50%, between zero and 50% of income loss across Europe. Yeah? With, with, with some deviations, I think, uh, due to the composition of what they are growing and what kind of menu is available. Yeah? Nice done. Thanks a lot. Um, uh, group two, could you, thanks a lot, Felix, uh, share your, the, the rest of the findings? And then uh, you should also have a look uh, at uh, the trade pattern. Uh, could you say something on that? Yes. So um, the rest of the findings would be uh, starting here, right? Or you can also uh, start from the beginning saying that you confirmed the findings of the group before or something like this, or if yes. you have... We, we confirmed uh, the findings, we had similar interpretations for it. So the, the main difference is always uh, go, going back to that the market model allows for adaptions in prices and the supply model uh, fixes prices. So everything else is basically influenced by this. Mm -hmm. And um, so then later we took a look at the mineral fertilizers um, for nitrate. And we had a reduction in the supply model of 20.85% and a reduction in the market model of 10.97%. Um, and this is also can be led back to the, to the basically the, to the, the price, uh, the pr price increase compensation in the market model. And by this uh, farmers wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be forced so much to reduce so much of their mineral, mineral fertilizer use uh, in the, in the market model mm -hmm. and much more in the, um, in the mineral, uh, in the, in the supply model. And this is also then here for, from obviously for manure, it would be more substitution effects if the prices are higher. And then we have um, the, the production supply of pulses um, that increased uh, by 135.72% in the um, in the supply model and 50.49% in the market model. And here, did we discuss this already? Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, production supply of pulses. In, uh, so, this would be so. increased, I think. Increased, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. Increased. And why, why would it increase? Did we discuss this? Ah, be, okay. So, because they're, they need less, less fertilizer. And so, probably they would be. Uh, it would be cheaper to produce uh, these kind of um, these kind of plants because they fix themselves um, the, the fertilizer from the air. Is that could that be an explanation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All so, right. Yeah. And uh, so the kind of fertilizer effect yeah, you have here. Yeah. And the animal herd sizes increase also because I guess obviously um, then there is a maybe a reduction in agricultural production and a change to towards um, uh, grassland and animal uh, animal uh, breeding and uh, yeah production. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Have you checked that? Have you checked that? Uh, 
uh, with, uh, so so if a rape land uh, changes mm -hmm. no we haven't that would be interesting to see okay. it can also can also it be related to the to the increase in demand of uh, of uh, organic uh, fertilizers is that uh, is that captured by the model yeah yeah i mean uh, i think this is something you have reported already so that the, the use of manure is increased yeah so, yeah, yeah, that's... so uh, and this means somehow, of course, um, it replaces mineral fertilizer to a certain extent. Yeah, uh, but if you, I think that the, the driving forces here, at least from my stomach feeling, is that that at the end, it's mainly also the losses we have at the crop production system of, of income. Yeah, so. And of course, I mean, if you have then the alternatives, then maybe if, yeah, if you have to pay a lot of for fertilizers, uh, then for certain farms might be specialized to other fertilizer less dependent uh, production systems. Yeah, and uh, you see that that the comparative advantage here increases of this animal, uh, probably also fattening systems, yeah, like carnivores or pig fattening. But this needs to be checked. You can do that, but I think we have seen that in one of the student groups. Uh, that uh, uh, ruminants also increase and then you have also a uh, land increase in, 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 in grassland and this also produce fodder yeah and this fodder needs to be uh, uh, put into uh, some animals yeah to have a value added yeah? i think this is the story it's not, it's not direct demand of uh, menu i think it's it's used a bit more yeah because we have a bit more animals uh, but menu is uh, uh, too uh, it's 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 probably not um, a, a proper fertilizer yeah i just yeah. i just checked um, actually the the pasture the grassland is decreasing decreasing yes this is interesting so, so then, it must then... be only intensification of of animal production basically with maybe um with with imported imported food no that's why you have pulses increased that much so ah okay so this is basically the food okay i see yeah yeah if but, uh, if related, it could be as well that the pulses go directly to animal feeding, and so uh, it would decrease the, the the imports for feed, increase the use of uh, of this to in, in relation to the increase of the use of this uh, um, of this uh, protein based uh, crops. And, and have you checked uh, the, the market balance for uh, soy imports and rapeseed imports and this kind of protein uh, high content crops? We can it, check that quickly. Uh, I mean, this is also, I, I would assume somehow, yeah, because we, we only penalized farmers here in Europe with this. Yeah? So, mm. and, and of course, uh, we have seen that there's an increase in prices so and, mm. and this triggers a lot of uh, redistribution on international markets yeah um, but but of course we are collecting questions here which needs to be further inspected i mean this is usual um uh, thanks a lot I, I would move now to maybe um jonas you just uh, continue and check that that would be nice if you can confirm that at the end of the session or not yeah uh, and then we move to group one. Um, Charlotte, are you doing this uh, presentation uh, or who is uh, in charge of that now? Antonia is doing the presentation. Ah, yeah, Antonia, it was. Sorry, I, I mixed up. Um, yeah, okay. we can do it together because I don't have the Capri uh, screen, but I have the presentation. So. That's good. That's good. Okay. Um, Go ahead. For the first part, we kind of had the same um, results like the other groups. Perfect. And uh, the last point is that we uh, saw our farm income decrease by 53% um, with the uh, without the market model and 47 with the market model. So that's uh, quite a lot, and uh, but quite similar. And um, for the environmental effects, uh, mm -hmm. we saw that the greenhouse gas emissions in total, uh, not per hectare, but in total, uh, decreased 
with the market model and even more without the market model. And uh, the global warming potential also decreased, but not that much, not as much as the greenhouse gas, uh, the, yeah, the other emissions. Um, okay, so uh, may I ask, uh, so is it now for Germany or is have you looked at, uh, yeah, is it for Germany? Yeah. Okay, good. So, so then you you have to take uh, if if you if you say global warming potential somehow of course uh, this yeah. has probably also some percentage point could fit quite well to Europe in total yeah this mm -hmm. is not a problem but uh, it's good uh, to state also at which which region you are looking yeah but uh, very nice so yes and the uh, land use change I didn't. Uh write it down, but maybe Charlotte can share her screen and we can have a look at it. Good, thanks a lot. Yeah, here are the environmental indicators. And yeah, we can also see here the land use change related emissions decreased in both models with the market model and without the market model. What could be the potential source for that? Uh, we, are, we asked the expert from GRCs. So what, what do you think? I mean, we have seen that somehow. Maybe you, we can confirm. I, I think we're seeing grassland. Yeah. But, but, so that's why I'm still waiting for checking. Uh, can you, uh, Charlotte, look at um, um, this uh, supply? Can you repeat the question? Sorry. So, 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 what is the reason for this land use uh, decline of emissions? So, the land use change. I mean, this is for Germany here. I mean, uh, Charlotte, can you? I would, I would say that it's related to the to the increase in pulse production pulses. Could be pulses, but but because uh, less uh, less work on the field, less uh, production of nitrogen. Uh, so per hectare, if this is per hectare. And uh, is it probably technologies? Yeah. Mitigation technologies. I don't know if these 2.7, they're available. No, sure. no, 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 they are not in. So that's why I'm, I wonder also a bit, I mean, uh, Charlotte, can you go to the supply models and uh, look as pasture uh, changes? And uh, again, for us, just as a reminder, I forgot already. And also, so if you go gun down to the uh, to the end of the list, um, So I think we had this pasture and it was a bit increasing, you see here. If it, no, this is the, is it the reference? No, yes, it, compared to the reference. And, uh, and arable land is the, I mean, this is the issue, yeah, probably. So at 3% uh, of our uh, productive land, I think must be 12 or 11 million. Is it, how much do we have here? 12, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, are declined. So, I mean, in total, I do not know how much it is, but there are some hectares and they are disappearing some here, uh, either converting to pasture or yeah, to a, a non-productive use of, of this land. Yeah, and uh, probably the, the carbon sequestration here yeah, can then t take place either as a kind of land abandoned man, Land Sorry, or... Alex. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point because uh, where is arable land? There is a decrease of three percent now. Yeah, and this yeah. with market model mm -hmm. and with pasture is increasing. Yeah, pasture is increasing a bit. You see that? No, where do you see that? It's at the the the, the row ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here, yeah. here, yeah, 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 yeah. But so, yeah, but so. Uh, what, why is this, uh, this, this, there is a decrease in uh, supply, uh, which, is, uh, which is proportional to the decrease in hectares, mm -hmm. but then in pasture there is a decrease in supply that's not at all proportion with the hectare age, the area. Yeah, I think this has something to do with, uh, with the marginal product um, of the set aside you have in the rape land. Uh, but, but I'm not so sure. We have to check that if the numbers are directly and are interlinked or it's just a pure, uh, I mean, or other way around. So arable land supply, what does it mean? So it means it must be the supply of all 
different activities sum up. So how can you do that for uh, vegetables? Maybe there is a, is a kind of accounting uh, weights in yeah, so that you end up in the same because a rabel, there is no fruit which or no corn which is called a rabel. It's a mixture of different products yeah, in supply. Can be in tons. Uh, we have also some products which are just uh, has a unit value, yeah, like this high, uh, uh, some some other crops also. So I have to check that. But in general, yeah, what you see here is, is our land nest. Yeah, you learned that yesterday. So that we have this uh, land nest as a constraint in our model. So it means here it decides first to. If you look at total agriculture, maybe we change that to, uh, can you look at the hectares uh, in total agri utilized agriculture area? Uh, Charlotte, this is the first row in this table. This is in uh, declining. Yeah? This is the first effect. So it, land is taken out of production from agriculture. Yeah? So this is probably the land use uh, change we can detect and also the emissions related to that. Yeah, Because they are not... Uh, uh, cropped a anymore and they are not fertilized, uh, there is no fertilizer put on it and all the emissions related to that. And the second effect, what we see is that most of this uh, is a composition effect of 3% decline of arable land and some increase of grassland. Yeah? So this is the substitution. And of course, we have transaction costs by doing that. Yeah. So a uh, classical question, I mean, can Capri, I mean, is land fixed? The land balance are fixed? No, they are not. I mean, we see that here and they are responding to, and this is important to know here, they are responding to the marginal revenue of land. And the marginal revenue of land is nothing else than translating, so to say, our higher prices of inputs yeah, into this marginal revenue. So they are declining. Yeah? And certain land qualities here in Germany might not be worth anymore to uh, keep under production. Yeah? So this is exactly here happening. And and can also be related with what you said before with the, the change of low to high yields or the opposite. Because, uh, yeah. be, because for example, here in cereals, you have also a decrease in hectares uh, uh, in area different from the production. So this either means that they are shifting some cereals, so I don't know, wheat for barley or something like that, or they are shifting from low to higher yields. Yeah, let's let's check that with the series. I mean, Charlotte, can you go a bit down so that where the series are indicated here? So, 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 so soft wheat is hectare declining. Durum wheat is probably ray. Barley is not, yeah, because barley does not need that much, and uh, barley is only for beer making. Yeah, so this this kind of barley is, has no high requirement for uh, yeah, nutrient precisely. inputs. Yeah. So we have a bit of crane mice, other seers are also completely going down. And this is a mixed effect in zeros, yeah. And then with the yields, of course, there should be interlinked. So if you have an increase, mm. you should have also increased yields. But it's in oats, this is not the case. This can uh, now the composition out of different regions in Germany, yeah. Because now we're still looking at Germany, yeah. Uh, it could be a composition effect of different regions. That's also a good point. So that means that it's related with the soil, for example, of the region? Yes, or it yeah, and the composition. Uh, that's yeah. what you meant with composition. Okay, so yeah. thanks. Okay, good. Um, Charlotte, you still have some issues uh, to report or? No. Antonia, done? So now it was, I think, a bit easier, yeah. So now that we we did it the first time, at uh, the third time, this exercise, uh, we saved even ten minutes for our uh, lunch break, which is also good, I think. If there are no other questions, I've um, I've looked up the the trade changes for the for fodder or for the for the crops, mm -hmm. and actually, so so I I've checked. Oh, maybe I'll share it again. Sorry. Yeah, go. I've checked um, protein rich by products i don't know whether this is the right category uh, uh, but i thought protein rich uh, products would be interesting um, they had less of an increase but they had uh, basically a net a net increase because the exports decreased more than the imports decreased mm. okay uh, but more interesting was for the maize here 
that increased by 350% uh, in, uh, import and decrease in export. Are you sure? That's very strange. <laughs> Are you sure? Because photomice is not uh, a tradable product. Yes. Oh, really? No. Yes. <laughs> I have, uh, in Rotterdam, I have not seen someone who is... Uh, <laughs> but, no, it's good. Maybe you go back uh, where you have indicated that uh, and it's maybe it's corn. It could, I mean, we have seen that that wheat production was declining, also uh, corn production, and of course, uh, the rest of the world... Yeah, not, grain. Uh, yeah. It was great. Yeah. So, so the rest of the world had this kind of policies are not in place. Yeah. So if a suit, I mean, this is also the problem we see here yeah, now in this climate debate. Yeah. I mean, if, if we in Europe start uh, introducing certain CO2 prices without accounting for certain effects like this, so uh, then we are just importing. Yeah. This is the classical issue. And unfortunately, uh, this is a not a net, uh, some, uh, not net sum game. I mean, the issue is that if uh, globally you have, different productivity and efficiency levels in producing certain products. Yeah? And it's, it would be bad if we have a high efficiency in producing certain crops. Yeah, we have a relative low emission level and then we are reducing this production and then importing from somewhere else. Yeah? So which particularly will happen if you are importing a lot of soy or exclude soy imports and we are producing soy more yeah the other way around probably with wheat yeah if we decline wheat by our policies uh, and then import wheat from somewhere else uh, then the, the net balance for emissions is probably negative yeah it's a complicated game you see that mm. can you quickly explain why it's why it says that here is, 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 is am i looking at the wrong uh, at the wrong figures Production balance details. European okay. fodder maize imports. And is fodder maize in this case the the corn? No, no, no. no. It's like the maybe if you look at the absolute values, maybe ah. it's very small. I don't know. Yeah, but it should and the product balance. Uh, this is probably something else. Yeah, this is. Yeah, you have yeah. zero and. <laughs> and zero. Okay, good. You have zero, yeah, but that... you have a percentage change. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> that's so that's why I said from nothing to nothing is uh, it's infinity. Yeah, I mean this. Is... <laughs> yeah. So 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 if you have nothing and double it, um... <laughs> then it's um, maybe then it's still maybe nothing. It's... Maybe it's captured by the model, something like 0 0.00001 yeah, yeah. or something the, the, like that. This, this might be an issue in the GUI, but so that's why I watch out there yeah, also for the absolute numbers. But uh, uh, Jonas, uh, great done. I mean, uh, can you come back? We just look at the the figures we wanted to have because you look at photomice, but it would be nice to look at soy. Yeah? I mean, if... So what, yeah, what mainly with soy. So this, I mean, we're producing a bit more pulses in soy now. Yeah, maybe we reduce that. Uh, not soy cake, so, but... Uh, soybeans, yeah. So the cake is a byproduct. So it's important, we know, but it's now the stories. So I see it is so yeah, seed is good. So and uh, the imports are let's see. So with the mar without the market model, okay. This is a so this is a this fifty five percent here. I mean, this is a, a kind of. A, how, how, how to say, um, this is just a calculation, yeah, because we have no market model in place, but here we have an increase. Mm -hmm. Is it a decrease? You see that? Yeah. So it, in, in export and an increase in imports. Yeah. Uh, go, you, can you go to rapeseed? That would, doesn't make much sense, does it? Why? Because you, you're producing more, uh, more protein crops. But the demand is there. I mean, we had hundred something percent, yeah, I and mean, that's why you are also uh, yeah, importing. Okay, yeah? okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay. Prices are increasing, so that I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so can you look at grape seed? Also, increase in yeah. imports and decrease in export. So this is uh, the import is by far, in. yeah, but yeah. the import is by far higher, yeah. So, uh, yeah, because we we importing more, and if you. By, for rape and so you also need them to look at rape cake yeah this can also be imported and also for uh, oils 
Yeah, and they are also this kind of oil seeds that that's why they are called oil seeds. Yeah? Uh, they are also producing oils, and and this makes the story now very complicated to see. I mean, yeah? so now you could look where this was imported from. Yeah, and if you have attached certain uh, emission factors there, you can globally cook, look yeah, at the leakage effects. Yeah, and what kind of uh, um, policy might then be applied as a tariff, yeah, as a, like a border carbon adjustment, yeah, to reduce that effect. Thanks a lot. I mean, this was, I think, a, a good session. Yeah, I had a feeling that you are not getting lost that often. Um, and then we uh, now spend uh, our reserve deserved uh, lunch break for one hour and see you then with the presentation of. Merely, I think. And he will then now introduce a bit more. Yeah, we, we, we got a smell already a bit uh, using trade and trade figures and looked at uh, market balances. He will introduce to us a uh, similar to as Maria did that for the supply module, the market module. And based on that, we have uh, then also uh, exercises on chugging uh, uh, tomorrow's GDP, human consumption, and the biofuel uh, mandates. Okay. So, see you in an hour.